Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mind Split Cafe. My man, Matt, I know you just got off a plane, so thank you for joining us. How you doing, man? Good, man. Just it was a it was a long, eventful couple of days. So, yeah, I'm blessed to be here. I'm I'm, yeah. well, I'm blessed to be back on Mind Split. I know I missed last week's episode, but uh, I'm really excited about being here. And we got Kristen Drake back. Yeah, and we got um, we got the Drake hubby here too. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Scott. Scott, thanks for thanks for getting dragged on the show by Kristen. Obviously, <laughs> you know, so. uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> I didn't even have to t- tug his arm or twist it. What is the saying? Twist your arm? No, didn't twist even your arm. There we go. So, yeah. Let's talk about. Let's kind of get into why both of you guys. I mean, obviously, Kristen, you know your um, your work at at, at Peak. Um, kind of prompted you to be on the first episode right and it did you know it did amazing um why is scott here like i kind of want to kind of touch on why is scott here why is scott here (laughs) i think scott's still trying to figure that out yeah so i think scott's still trying to are you mad scott no (laughs) i think there are um, so many layers to that question like do you mean in a in a universal or a very philosophical why are you here no yeah on the show (laughs) and congratulations i've been married 25 years which that's going to come into play in a little bit you know when we get into talking why you know why you guys are joining us as a married couple right and so Mm -hmm. i just want to give you a kudos 25 years that's you know that's quarter of a century right there guys yeah that's that takes some navigation yeah yeah that's that's a lot longer when you say it like that (laughs) <laughs> i was like that sounds gross guys no i feel like we're we just turned 30 and we've got this young fun relationship and marriage and no i'm kidding um but i really <laughs> no i mean we do yeah. i was about to say wait what are you kidding about <laughs> yeah, right exactly we do we have a we have a fun interesting marriage and i think you know and thinking when, when i was talking to scott about the podcast that we recorded together earlier mm-hmm. um I started to, well, I mean, I think I've always realized that we've been different. Like we're complete polar opposites, clearly, yeah. you know, um, well, clearly like people could just see that we're polar opposites. Yeah, everyone can see well, it. Well, off can camera, see it was clear with what we were discussing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys understand that, that we are complete polar opposites, but you know, I really started to think about, um, you know, generational differences in the understanding of, of mental health and the, uh, I guess, sensitivities to mental health. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what we talked about on the last podcast was, you know, these younger generations being a little more um, woke when it comes to mental health understanding and, and really just appreciating that another person that you may be talking to might be going through a struggle. And mm-hmm. even though, you know, it's us that are the ones that are teaching these younger generations, we still kind of struggle with that. And so I was telling him about the podcast and I was talking about his upbringing and, and how that kind of molded his mental health and Mm -hmm. started realizing that I was completely wrong. Um, Not not completely wrong, but it was actually, he spent the majority of his childhood with his grandparents and, you know, his grandparents are, I mean, grandpa was world war II veteran um other grandpa uh, paternal grandpa was actually a pow for 48 wow. months Jeez. uh during- yeah, so that's a completely different perspective on on life in general but mental health as well absolutely and you know that really was the that was the generation of true like grit mm-hmm. right just survive walk and it off type do of what mentality. you gotta do yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you don't have time to to sit around and think too much about things. You got to push on. Go, go. Yeah, you know? kind of like, hey, your dog passed away. Get it? Get over it. <laughs> don't be sad because it's fine. It happened. Don't be sad. Um, yeah. I know it was, but I mean, we didn't dwell on things, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't something that you you touched on too much. You know what I mean? Things happen and, and people died, dogs died, whatever, you know, and you yeah. Yeah. roll on with it. Mm-hmm. So, so what was the general, like, so when something happened, someone was having a bad mental day, or if it was depression or anxiety, what happened in the family when, when that happened? Did you just not bring it up? You didn't talk about it? Or was it just like a, a quick talk with your grandpa and, and, you know, walk to first base kind of thing? What Walk us through that. 
Uh, I don't even know how to respond to that because I don't, <laughs> I don't remember ever anybody having a bad mental day. It was just, you know, yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't have bad mental days. Yeah, and, and It was I, a little I, different back then. I agree with that because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, there was this, it wasn't a hot topic like it is, you know. No, like you didn't 20... stop to talk about every feeling that came along back then. You yeah. just, you know. You just yeah. pick yourself up and keep going. Pretty you much. Know? I mean, you know, not in a hard, well, I mean, there were hard people back then, you know, but it wasn't like a, a cold thing or anything like that. Just nobody had time to think about that, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, growing up, I, I was kind of the same way with 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 my dad. And I mean, it wasn't like a, hey, don't talk about your feelings, but it was more so just like, come on, keep trucking, keep moving like you'll be fine. Right. There's better days like this. If this is the worst of your day, you're good kind of thing. So, yeah, I think it might be a generational thing at times thing, because nowadays it's it's a little more common to talk about your mental health. Um so I, I and I know Matt, you kind of grew up the same way, and and even when you were playing collegiate sports, it was kind of the same thing. Yeah, when I was when I was playing basketball, you know, guys, it wasn't it wasn't like I said a hot topic like it is now, right? And so, um, you, you know, we all went through bad days, but we understood that everybody was kind of going through the same thing. So it was like, I'm no different. I've just got to keep going forward. You know, and I've just got to, okay, it was a bad day or a bad practice or I'm really stressed out or whatever it is. I just got to get through it and, and, you know, get over that hump. Right. And so as compared to now who my son is 23 and he plays collegiate sports and he's a basketball player and it's, you know, the, um, the foundation for the programs is set up differently. Like they have therapist you know that they can call they have you know yeah. treatments and they have you know tools that the university has provided for their athletes to try and combat you know symptoms or you know feelings or whatever right and so mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely something that um you know it's it's definitely changed for the better right so now y'all kind of come through from two different backgrounds, right? And then y'all have a beautiful daughter, Tristan, correct? Yeah. So I, the question I have, I, this is the probably the main question I have is, how does the two different influences growing up, you know? <laughs> good question. Like, I got this one. Very good yeah, question. Yeah. How, does, how, does the, how does the two influences of that polar opposite, you know, um, kind of come into play, and how does Tristan kind of deal with it, receive it? What, like, how does that affect her? So I thought about this a lot after our last recording, and she has a very strong understanding of mental health, and and I know that she gets that from me because I've had those conversations with her, but she also has this internal spirit of toughness which he clearly gets from this at palms behavioral health we understand the journey to mental wellness our dedicated team offers personalized care for adolescents adults and seniors we focus on individualized treatment plans addressing a wide range of mental health needs our evidence-based practices and trauma-informed care ensure sensitive and effective treatment Palms Behavioral Health, Healing Minds, Empowering Lives. Contact us today. This guy, I mean, one of the things that I admire most about him and now also her is that they speak their mind. And, you know, I, I was raised where you um, are not really heard um, and you're kind of pushed pushed back. So we didn't really even talk about how my childhood molded my understandings of mental health because it, it wasn't encouraged by my parents either to discuss bad days. But, you know, talking last time about how my dad struggled with serious mental illness, I had a lot of bad days. I, I had yeah. a lot of bad days. Um, there's a lot of trauma there too. I went through years and years and years of suicide, suicidality and, you know, several attempts as a, as a teenager. And, you know, when I, when I was struggling, <clears throat> I struggled by myself. Yeah. I struggled alone. I had, yeah. I struggled with my dog, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's why to me, ugh, it would just be, you know, when one of my pets yeah. died, they were most of the times my only 
friend and supporter yeah. were were my dogs and so when they died it was like Oh, devastating. Remember, right? and, yeah, yeah. and and so I learned how to, I just, I struggled through it on my own. Um, I realized, you know, I, I can't just continue to live like this. You have to push on. You have to, you want a better life for your daughter. You need to go to school. You need to make more money. You know, grew up in a very um, poor household, <clears throat> was raised on beans and cornbread. That's why I'm so big. Look at this <laughs> big girl. <laughs> raised on beans and cornbread you know because we we didn't have any money um but I think that's also why she has that understanding is because I never wanted her to suffer or struggle alone yeah because yeah, that's of course not. right yeah that's change terrible. change what you experienced right yeah. um but then you know he would come in and you know not that it was insensitive it's just a different way that he was raised right let's say if she was having a um an emotional state or whatever maybe a period of depression anxiety he would say well you know what's wrong with you you're fine it's fine you're fine yeah. everything's fine it's fine <laughs> so so she also has that mental toughness which i like and you know she she works with him she sees him interacting with people with customers and you know if he disagrees with something or he doesn't like something somebody says he tells them and to me, I'm just like, my guts bleh, come out when he speaks his mm-hmm. feelings to, or, you know, the way he feels about a certain situation. Because yeah. to me, if I were on the receiving end of that, I would be destroyed. It's not mean. It's just, I can't handle that. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah, it's different than, than what you're used to as far as being spoken to, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if, if you know, if I have a problem with something, I just keep it to myself. Um, and that's not a way to be, I would rather be able to speak my mind and say, Hey, you know, I don't disagree with this. For instance, you know, if, if in work, because, you know, he flies medevac, um, helicopters, if there's something maybe that he's asked to do that he disagrees with, he's going to say, uh, no, absolutely not. I disagree with that. Whereas I would be like, okay, <laughs> how am I going to make this work? Cause now yeah. I'm getting nervous and blah, you know? Yeah. So Scott, when, when when she mentioned that you're a medevac helicopter, is that in the military or is it uh, civilian, private? No, that's that's civilian. I've been out of the military. I got out in 2016, um, and I did that for 11. 11 years. Yeah, something like that. 11 years ish. Okay. So, but do you think? And in the question I'm about to ask, I, I kind of have how I feel about it because I have uh, military family members. My brother was in the military for 21 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but my my question is, do you think that not only your upbringing but being in the military kind of shaped your viewpoint on not? I don't want to say viewpoint, but the way you handle your mental health. Because I know the military is real strict. Uh, you know, my brother's my brother's the same way you know, love the dude to death, but I, I, a lot of people that I know that were in the military or currently in the military, they don't really show their expression or their emotions. And I don't know if that's a military thing, but I, I kind of feel it is. What, how do you I, feel? I, about I, don't, that? I don't think that's a military thing. Cause you run into all types of people in the military and you know, it, it's kind of the same civilian military, whatever. I mean, you got the same people that are a little more sensitive in the military, you know, they, yeah, um, <laughs> it, they're not quite as, as tough or you know hard or whatever um and then you got the people that are real real hard even harder than i am you know uh and i I don't think i'm a hard guy but you know i'm definitely not a tough guy um yeah yeah he's a liar what makes you (laughs) so tough (laughs) what makes you tough you know in in some people's eyes is just keeping keeping on doing whatever's going on you know what i mean you don't stop you don't piss and moan you don't whine when something gets a little bit tough you just keep going through it and some people, military, civilian, whatever, they've got the, I don't even want to say drive. It's not drive. It's they've got the mental fortitude to push through stuff or they got to sit down and piss and moan, you know? Well, but yeah. when you, you told me that when you go through your training in military, they teach you that you have to be tough. You have to have that mental fortitude. You well, can't... I mean, it's hard to teach that. <laughs> That's the thing. Right. Is, you know, there were, there were people that, that pushed through, uh, better than other people, you know, and it's hard to oh, teach. Them. It. And if you don't really, if you don't really have it, then you're never going to have it, but you can still push through. 
you know you're you're exactly right so uh, you know what i what i kind of relate to what you're saying is um when i was playing basketball and and obviously i i continue to watch basketball and it's you know it's but they always talk about the you know the guy has all the potential but what kind of you can't coach heart you know like you oh. can't coach that kid that just wants to just endure and push through and achieve so bad that they're willing to run through that wall or, you know what I'm saying? And so. Oh yeah, man. Well, I mean, growing up where I grew up, I grew up in central Texas and competing in any sport in central Texas was so hard. Well, where did you grow up? I'm just I grew kidding. up near Waco. Okay, okay, I grew up in Bastrop. So okay, when you said yeah. Central Texas. I was like, oh, okay. yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, heart of Texas. Yeah. Well, tell them where you're really from. No, oh, no, <laughs> nobody knows it. Uh, I bet, I bet Matt would. Marlin, Texas. I know exactly where Marlin. Marlin, at. Texas. Okay. okay. So I, I grew up in Waco, right there on yeah, I-35. Yeah, it's right there. So I grew up in in a you know a town that was, I don't know how many people are there now. It was like five thousand people when yeah. when I was a kid, and then it just kind oh, of a tiny town. Time. So, you know, but in that, that part of the world, man, if you're going to play sports, you better, you better have the drive because there's a bunch of kids that that's their only way out of whatever they're living right then. Exactly. And they're going to drive harder than you. And yep. I didn't have it to compete beyond, you know, sophomore yeah. year in high school and anything except for golf, you know, <laughs> that's a sport. It's not a sport. A sport. Oh, we had this conversation. Matt, like, it is a sport. sport Kristen. <laughs> It is a sport. There is yeah. physical exertion. Yeah. Okay. And it's, and it's, men, it's mentally exercising. Like, oh, yeah. which it, is, you like you a, which is like a what? Like a game. No. <laughs> well, so is basketball. Basketball is a game. Football is a game. a game, but it is a sport. Yeah. Well, so is mm. golf. This has and been will, the topic of many so of our And so is cheerleading. Arguments. Cheerleading is a sport. It is. It is now. When I was going to school, yeah. it wasn't. It, I mean, it was just, yeah. you know. So but now, activity. athleticism. But yeah. Anyway, man. I mean, I, I love. I love playing sports when I was a kid. But I mean, the first time that I got run over, you know, on the football field by a kid that was like six inches shorter than me, and like I got up and I was like, I'm done, man. That's yeah. like, that, that kid that's smaller than I am, and I wasn't a big kid at all by any means. Uh, you know, I played receiver and cornerback, and it was kind of funny because as a receiver, I'd come off the line and these cornerbacks outweighed me and they'd grab me by the pads and just kind of hold me, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> if I could get away, if I could get away, I was fine because I was fast. But if they got a hold of me, it was like, come on, man, let me go, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly why I played basketball and not football. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that was like freshman year, I think, or maybe sophomore. I don't remember, but. Yeah, I got run over by a kid that was smaller than I was. And I was like, that kid's got way more drive than I do to play this sport. And I can't mm -hmm. compete. And so I, you know, I was done. I knew it. Yeah. I was like, I don't have the drive to compete as much as that kid does. So I'm out, man, because he's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah. well, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And mine was completely opposite. Sports to me was my way of, you know, escaping home because I could always be out. I could be physical. And, you know, we talked about the Olympic system. Um, on our last podcast, and when you when you are raised um, with a lot of trauma, just constant yeah. trauma, your your limbic system is just always fired up. Mm -hmm. And so I had like, and I this may be vulgar, and I apologize, but like the neuro pathway to my fight, flight, or freeze response mm -hmm. is like I can go down that way on a slip and slide with baby oil all all on it because it's like <laughs> five butter freeze go so for sports yeah. for me that was my perfect outlet and my brain because i would yeah, always yeah. yeah and so now with with you know because i still have it right you, you you can train and you can teach yourself to to calm yourself down once you get in that moment um to an extent but it sports helped me to to fight through that and you know a lot of folks with with ptsd actually end up um having a lot of injuries because mm -hmm. they start to play sports well and they and they play so hard because they've got so much to just blah, just get out like i boxed for three years i played football oh, wow. for three years i'm on my sixth knee surgery because i don't know and he would always tell me he's like babe why don't you just 
tone it back a little bit. Go 85%. It's fun. You're a <laughs> really back a little. Woman. Yeah. You don't have to go full force. You're not trying to get into the Olympics. You're not. And I'm like, but now I have to win. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to, I was going to ask, how do you, you know, cause obviously we're, we're all, I don't want to say we're, we're, we're all seasoned on this podcast. right? Yes. We're, Except for Chris. Well worded. No, nah, well, okay, I'll take it. No, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna use the word old, but we're seasoned, right? But definitely seasoned. Yeah. yeah, but we're not spring chickens anymore, right? And so what I'm what I'm getting at is Kristen, you said something that sports was your outlet. And it was great when you were young because you could do it and you you know, we all felt invincible when we were young, right? How do you find that release? Now that sports is not really, you know, you've got the knee surgeries, you've got the hip replacement. I'm not saying you have a hip replacement, but a buddy of mine that's my age just got his hip replaced, right? Oh, dang. So how do you, how do you find another outlet Yeah. for that flight, fr- fight or freeze to release that if, that activity and that your body can't do what you did when we were spring chickens. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a really good question. And that's why I actually started doing a lot of the research on the fight, flight, or freeze response. Like what starts it, what creates it, what is the process? What does it look like? Because if you can identify a problem, Mm -hmm. you can find a solution. And I wanted to, to have a better control over my emotions instead of just fighting it out, right? Like I bought this, you know, Mustang 5.0 and I would literally just drive through traffic Scott's like this. Face. Yeah, God, I, I, I saw that. <laughs> he would never drive with me because it was, you know, I, I, I was very dangerous because of that was the adrenaline that I had because I couldn't do sports. Um, and then, but I thought I can't sustain this level of constantly being at that fight flight or freeze a, state and so i have yeah. to i have to identify it and define it so i can work on it so i it. have been able to work on it but there are times there are times where where i can't shut it down like it goes yeah. past the point of no return my frontal cortex shuts down and then i'm ready to fight i'm ready to fight and that's all that's all I know. So I've gotten better. I've hopefully. seen it in a gas station. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I a whole sounds like a scary episode, time. Right? It was ridiculous. I, I was so just ugh, I was out of control. You were blind with rage. That's I, what that I really saying was. is, right? It's you're blinded by rage. And it's just because of that that from yeah, I think we ought to talk about that one when she chased a woman through traffic and followed her into a gas station. Yeah, I was like, no, nah, gotta calm down. <laughs> Well, and that was actually the moment that was the moment I was 35 years old where um, I was explaining this road rage story that I had with our women's only therapist at a previous hospital. And so she's worked with trauma, 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 right? For years, she knows women and trauma. And so I'm explaining this story because I'm doing customer service training for the staff. And I had the girls rolling. Like they thought it was so funny. <laughs> and then the um, the women's therapist, she said, uh, do you have history of trauma? And just ripped off my mask and saw straight, straight through, through. Yeah. straight through to my bones. And she said, have you ever processed that? And I said, no. Right, like a badass, and 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 she no, said, I, I "Why?" Just people in the gas stations. That's what I do, you know. Right, right, right. And she said, "Why haven't you processed that?" And I said, "Because I'm fine." And she goes, "Really? Are you? Because you're 35, right?" And I said, "I, I am." She said, "Something very interesting happens as you get closer to 40 in women. Your hormones are going to start to change, and you can take this one episode, this one scenario, and you multiply the severity by a hundred times. You're going to end up hurting somebody, possibly killing somebody, and you're going to end up in prison. Didn't you say you're going to be a grandma?" <laughs> I said, <laughs> "Yes, ma'am." And she said, "Okay. How would you like for your grandson to come and visit you in prison?" <laughs> I was like. That's kind of wow. mm-hmm. eye opener. Yeah. An and she opener. said, Well, you yeah. have my cell number. You call me. And I didn't. I didn't. Right. Because I was still fine. 
<laughs> and it, it took me two years and finally something else happened, which we don't need to go into, but I text her and I said, Hey, is this still your number? And she said, are you ready? That was oh. her only response. I hadn't seen her in two years, guys, two years. Wow. And she says, are you ready? And processing all of that trauma. And this is what I really, really, really want people to know and to understand and to be safe in doing so is to process that trauma. That's mm -hmm. another thing that helped me when I couldn't use sports as an outlet, because once you process that, you your brain, because I did EMDR, which is the eye movement, yeah. eye, help me out here, uh, eye movement, something desensitization. Yeah. Um, and so basically you pluck out all of this trauma that you've locked up in this like chest that's wrapped with all these rusty chains and like the biggest lock you can imagine and you have to take all those locks off and those chains off and you have to pull out that trauma and you have to lay it in front of yourself you have to face it and process it and through emdr it processes it processes it into a different part of your brain mm -hmm. and slowly what i'm starting to realize is i'm actually having a harder time thinking about the trauma that I experienced, you know, by the hands of my father. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm starting to be better able to see the life lessons that he taught me because mm -hmm. he really did, you know? And so I just, I think it's so important. So to answer your question, <laughs> processing my trauma, mm -hmm. but um, also learning about the limbic system. What does the fight, flight, or freeze look like? What happens yeah. physiologically in your body so that you can recognize when it gets activated and then I do also still work out. I was a spinning instructor um, for a long time, which gets a lot of that out too. Yeah, so. I'm sure. Yeah, does. absolutely. I'm sure it does. Now, and I talked to this guy, and he oh, just yeah. says, "We'll stop it." <laughs> of course. Now, stop how it. old is Tristan? She's 24 now. 24. Okay. Yeah, because so remember, our kiddos are close. Yeah, yeah, her and Evan, my son, are about the same age, right? And so, yeah, you know, growing up, giving when she was growing up you know especially teenage years can be difficult right there's so much it's so much different than when we were growing up because there was no social media right if you were getting bullied at, at school when we were growing up it was usually monday through friday like 8 a.m to 3 p.m you had to endure it but then you could go home and get a break or you could go home for the weekend and get a break and then just worry about it you know get the sunday scaries Back, that guy back, lived right? in your neighborhood yeah unless he lives in your or, or they live in your neighborhood right but but what you know nowadays with social media people can reach out to you you know middle of the night anywhere yeah anywhere you know and, well, that's, that's a difference so you know between people from i would say our generation you know um I don't know how old you are, Chris, but you know, uh, I'm 36. Just to throw it out there, so okay. it's kind of in so there, it's kind, of, kind of at that in between stage, right? He's, yeah, he's yeah, a little bit. Season, you know, um, but you know, people like in our age group, it's like you call me what? Okay, hurt my hurt my feelings. Let it roll off your shoulders. <laughs> um, yeah. So the the whole. I don't really believe in generations, you know, like uh, people want to break people down into Gen X, Gen Y, Gen mm -hmm. Z, all that bull crap, you know, everybody fits into their own thing, but it's not a set cutoff date for generational stuff, right? Of course not. There's yeah. all no, I agree with that. But I, I will say that the, what people define as the Gen X generation, we seriously don't care, man. We don't, like, I don't get, I don't, I couldn't care. Uh, yeah. I almost said something bad. I don't know if we're bleeping though. But uh, anyway, um, we genuinely don't care. Like yeah. you say whatever you want, man. You think whatever you want. <laughs> I sleep fine, dude. You're not going to hurt me. I think that's you, babe. I don't think that's most people. I think that's you. So I, I, I have, uh, you know, we, people can talk what they want and say what they want. I have that same kind of feeling. Like I'll, I'll let that kind of stuff roll off my shoulders. So I kind of think that that's the same or at least maybe the same concept but yeah I, I let you know i think most people can let things roll off their shoulders for the most part if it's yeah, someone like trying saying. to bully them it's not purely generational but i think the generations kind of after ours they kind of uh what's the word man they're a little more attuned. soft 
Yeah, I'm not, it's not soft. Man. I'm like, I mean, careful now. You know, there's still, <laughs> yeah. you know, right now there's some kid in junior high that's like, I don't care. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, I think it's it's more of a shift to like maybe percentage wise of who's attuned to uh, maybe letting somebody hurt their feelings with words. I don't know, but I don't even know how to relate to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, the question that I, I guess I wanted to, were you able to identify when Tristan was growing up? Were you able to identify maybe certain moods or swings or, you know, not traumas, but like events or something happened? Like, you know, somebody was mean to her or like a breakup, you know, boyfriend or whatever, whatever the case is. Were you able to, given your expertise and your blended, your kind of blended um, experiences, right? Were you guys able to really kind of, help identify and kind of guide Tristan through her Good question. you know her her adolescent and teenage years yes so um Freud was Sigmund Freud was very weird but one thing that he definitely was like right on was you know daddy's little girl and then a mama's boy right so yeah. had we had a son we'd be like this And my daughter and I are very close, but only now, you know, and growing up, she was, I I always tell people she was was a terrorist. And if she was here right now, she'd be like, that's fair (laughs) Um, to me, to me. And so when she was going through hard times, I, I was definitely able to, to recognize that. And, you know, I would, I would try so hard to console her and to allow her to express her thoughts, her feelings, and let's really talk about this and, and work it out. And what's interesting is she gravitated more towards his approach, his style, which was, let me just hug you very awkwardly because neither one of them are are very touchy feeling. It's like three seconds and then you start getting a pat. You get three seconds. Stop patting. (laughs) Weird. Um, But, you know, she would be crying and he would hold her, console her and just say, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And that worked. But I also know, I also know that my words seeped into her brains because now she is able to console and help others work through their issues. Fantastic. And she was always the protector, right? Because I was always the victim. And so as I was growing up, I wanted to be the aggressor, which I think is why I, I was so aggressive in sports. Um, and you know, then once I was tired of being the aggressor, I wanted to be the protector. Yeah. I didn't want, like, if I saw someone getting picked on, I'd be like, Hey, stop picking on them. Yeah. want to be the one to step in. Uh Uh-huh. And she picked that up too. So, you know, at school, if there would be some kid that was just getting demolished, bullied relentlessly, she would stick up. She would come in and step in. Yeah. Mm-hmm, which is really cool well, kudos so kudos to Tristan that's awesome yeah she I'm telling you she she's incredible but I think it's because she has a good combination of I you agree. know the the mental resilience that this guy has mm-hmm. um and then the understanding that yeah it's absolutely okay sometimes yeah. to go through a struggle and it's okay to cry like it's because we hate it and it sucks yeah. it's okay um and it's okay to talk about you know having a, a hard time and and going through trials i can tell you i cried one time it's not that great <laughs> it's overrated right it's overrated. One. yeah That's legit. he's only cried thrice times actually three times in our in you, you years. Know. well yeah well i doubt yeah. he cried privately i don't know maybe you have i don't know <laughs> but i've only physically seen him cry three times i'm just he's just a tough just a tough yeah. dude but i think There's, you know yeah. What, what I found very interesting is how two people who have such differing views on mental health can have a successful relationship and mm-hmm. marriage. I mean, again, after 25 years, you know, we wouldn't come on here if I thought we had a crappy marriage. I'd be like, yeah, we're just going to keep that private. <laughs> but no, I want to shout to the rooftops. Like, yeah. we, as different as we are, like, you've got death metal and then you've got Jimmy Buffett. You've got black and then you've got browns and blues and nice softness and, you know, whatever. And then you've got a Mustang and then you've got 
a Hummer. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, so, it, it's yeah. the yin and the yang. You guys, you guys are each other's there's balance. opposite. There's that balance. There, you know, that little yin, that it is yin and yang. And you see yeah. that symbol. And if you look at it, it's so, you know, it's geometrically, it's, there's a synergy to it, right? That not well, one we, side. We help each other, more. you know, I mean, like, because we're so different, you know, she'll come to me with something and, and I'll go, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Is it going to kill you? Probably not. Um, you it's know, very grounding. Yeah. But, you know, then I have things like that I have to be pulled back to, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it, I don't know what to call it, but you know, it's not that I lose my humanity. It's just that I have my, my focuses are different. You know, some, yeah. something bad happens to somebody at work and I'm like, well, crap, when's it going to, how long is it going to be till they get back to work? You know? And yeah. she's like, Hey, this bad thing happened to them. You might want to focus a little bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Can you text and, them? Hey, are you all right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, well, crap, how long are they going to be gone? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. I, I think that, that there is a balance and there is definitely a symmetry um, or a synergy to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, very synergistic. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because I don't think every relationship can work that way. Right. Um, where you have two completely opposite people and have it work yin and yang so are you yeah. yin or am i yang or what's what's the, whatever it doesn't matter i like i want to be yang, <laughs> it be yang but um <laughs> anyways i'm yang he's yin and i think that you know a lot of <laughs> i don't do astrology yeah <laughs> that's not that's not my forte <laughs> it's not my thing i just i just go to work you're a sagittarius yeah. just, okay yeah. i don't even know that and i go to work and I get and I go to work. Yeah. I'm just a dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just well, you're pretty cool in my book, Scott. So what's yeah. up? I, I I know we're running short on time, but I just wanted to tell you guys like thank you so much for sharing your story. And, and I'm a lot more outgoing with this, but this is her her realm. So you know, yeah. <laughs> no, no I, we, I, we appreciate you coming on the show with with uh Kristen. Um I, I definitely like the dynamic dual aspect of, of how you guys have come from different sides and, and what you've created together. So absolutely yeah. kudos on that as well. Yeah. Aww. And congratulations on, on raising a, you know, a, a daughter that's, that's successful and that's, you know, functioning in the, in this crazy world. Right. Yeah. And, and, and being able to balance so many things like other kids and other people, you know, deal with, but, you know, kudos to you guys for raising, you know, a great kid, you know, she is great. And, you know, thinking about her relationship with uh, her boyfriend right now, um, they have a lot of similarities, but he, he is also very good at keeping her grounded. Like he good. is me. If I, you know, come home and I'm like, ah, this happened and this happened and this happened. He'll just pause, <laughs> calm down. Yeah. Stop it's fine <laughs> you know yeah but sometimes i think we get to where our world is this small and he's able to say whoa look at look at all this look at the bigger you know? picture yeah right exactly. and so it, it's great but you know i i thank you guys for being on and uh or for having us on excuse me oh you're welcome um, back anytime yeah and and, and i know me. scott you were a man of few words but when you speak you you know it it, Hard. it travels right <laughs> so. no it, it makes sense though what you said makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll have to we'll have to get the chess timer out next time for conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining the show this week. No, thank yeah. you both. And Matt, go get some sleep, friend. Go get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Matt. Thanks for for jumping on this after being oh, on. A, I, a, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't. Have yeah, you it. went halfway across the United States, man. Um, I appreciate it. I, I did. And you know what? I wouldn't have missed this for anything. So Kristen, you're one of my favorite people and you're one of our favorite guests. And so thank you again for sharing your story and sharing your husband, you know, and Scott, you're pretty cool, man. So hey. don't, let, <laughs> don't let them tell you anything. Glad somebody thinks so. Oh, he's yeah. 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 And yeah, even man, if they told you you weren't cool, you wouldn't give that. a shit anyways. You'd be yeah, like, exactly. Right, man, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I'm cool either way. Man, you're cool yeah, either, way, either way, man. That's it. That's it, man. So, Kristen, Scott, thank you again for joining the show. Thank you. Y'all yes, take you. care. Thanks, guys. And, we'll and talk to our you. listeners, thank you, and we'll see you next week.